Hi, I'm Jessica. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about human trafficking, specifically who is at risk and the tactics traffickers use to recruit, groom, and exploit others. In my time with Unbound, I've educated thousands of youth, school personnel, caregivers, medical professionals, community members, and more. Because I believe that through education and training, we can prevent this exploitation from happening and intervene when it does. Most trafficking situations start because a trafficker identifies the unmet needs or desires in a person's life and decides to exploit them. In labor trafficking, common risk factors include immigration status, low levels of education, a debt that needs to be paid off, or being economically disadvantaged. In many cases, labor trafficking victims are brought into a job under false pretenses and kept there through threats and violence. With sex trafficking, common risk factors include a history of previous abuse or exploitation, substance use, homelessness, mental illness, involvement in the commercial sex industry, and low socioeconomic status. With child sex trafficking, common risk factors are running away or homelessness, child sexual abuse, chronic abuse or neglect, identification as LGBTQ, learning disabilities, low socioeconomic status, developmental or cognitive delays, promotion of sexual exploitation by family members or peers, and a lack of personal safety, isolation, emotional distress, substance abuse, mental illness, and a lack of social support. One group that's often under-recognized in child sex trafficking is boys. Male sex trafficking victims may have an even lower chance of identification. Our culture often pictures males as perpetrators of sex crimes and females as victims of sex crimes. And there may even be a greater stigma or felt shame for boy victims that keeps them from reaching out. A study published by Love 146 indicated that male minors may comprise almost half of the commercially sexually exploited youth in our country, but they often go unidentified. The primary risk factor observed for underaged male victims is homelessness. Boys may be homeless because they were thrown out of the house or have run away due to family dysfunction, including abuse or familial substance abuse. Many youth who identify as gay or are transgender report having been thrown out of their homes or having experienced significant discrimination, including bullying and abuse. This puts them in an extremely vulnerable position for all sorts of victimization. One thing that may set boys apart is the prevalence of survival sex, often connected to the needs presented by homelessness. Boy victims may be recruited directly by buyers rather than a third-party trafficker. They're more likely to feel a sense of agency, like they are in control of the situation, therefore a boy victim may feel less like a victim. They are likely to be drawn in by a buyer offering to meet their needs and provide a sense of belonging. Let's watch this video that portrays the trafficking of a boy and how his friend notices suspicious behavior and takes action. Then we'll dive into the tactics traffickers use to recruit and groom victims. Oh my God, we Dude, got it. We finally got him. I know. Wait, how do you get that skin? That skin, it's on level three. Okay. It, <clears throat> um, what was that? It's it's nothing, it's just something I do later. Okay. How do you get it? So level three, about midway through the level, okay. there's a door. Um, I need to go. Okay. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for inviting me over. The tactics of traffickers can be broken down into four main themes. First, violence. 
traffickers may use violence or threats of violence against their victim or a victim's loved one. Second, lies or false promises. Traffickers may tell the victim that they are going to get a good job in a restaurant only to discover it's actually sex work. Traffickers may paint a dream of money, success, and freedom as bait. We've seen several situations where a pimp convinces a girl to work in a strip club to save up money and gain confidence for a modeling career. Soon after, the pimp forces her into selling sex. Traffickers may also befriend their victim, working to gain their trust. The trafficker may help the victim out, buying them what they want or need. Over time, however, the trafficker may start convincing the victim that they owe them and need to give something back. Lastly, traffickers may use romance to gain the love and devotion of the victim. According to Polaris Project, this tactic called boyfriending is the most common way traffickers initiate a relationship with a potential victim. An example of this last tactic is a survivor Unbound work with who we call Macy. On her 16th birthday, Macy was scrolling through her Facebook wall, enjoying the attention of the happy birthdays from dozens of friends, acquaintances, and several people she'd never met before. One message in particular caught her eye, a cute guy she didn't know wishing her a happy birthday with some compliments she hadn't heard in a while. They started messaging back and forth, and pretty soon Macy felt like she was in love. She'd never met someone who understood her so well empathized with the depression she'd been dealing with and made her feel so special and beautiful. After talking for a few months, they decided it was time to meet. Macy's mom was protective. As a single mom, she worked hard to make ends meet and raise her kids to be respectful and to focus on school. But one night, Macy snuck out to meet in person with this guy she'd grown so attached to online. That's when she realized the truth. He wasn't 19, like he said, he was 33. Macy was confused, but at this point, she loved him enough to forgive his lie. He said he loved her, he wanted to be with her, that was enough. That's when her nightmare began. This man, who won her trust as her boyfriend, soon became her trafficker. Six months later, the Unbound Waco hotline rang. A desperate mother was calling for help. Her teenage daughter had been brutally trafficked, raped at gunpoint, beaten, and abused. With the complex trauma bonding caused by her abuse, her daughter, Macy, kept running away from home and going back to her trafficker. She knew her family was in danger, but she was about to give up hope. She'd been turned down for services too many times due to Macy's health conditions and limited space. Unbound was her final call. Thankfully, Unbound provides crisis response and relational case management to help any human trafficking victim find healing and rebuild a life of freedom. One common tactic of traffickers we see with youth is social media and online gaming, and that's why it's so important for adults to talk to youth about their online safety and monitor their online activity. Messaging and games allow traffickers to hide behind a screen, using whatever names and images they want to build a relationship with their victims. As in Macy's story earlier, the trafficker pretended to be someone else, building their relationship until she fell in love with him. Child predators and traffickers often use online gaming to groom their victims, especially boys. A predator may befriend a boy through messaging, then start to give him gifts like in-game items or credits. He may then use these favors to manipulate the child to send photos or videos. Once a trafficker has those, they can be used as blackmail to exploit the child further. Another major risk factor for trafficking is sexting. With the growth of messaging apps, sexting has become normal among teenagers. They may send a photo to someone they think they can trust and want to gain the favor of, like a crush or a boyfriend. From there, that person can use that image as blackmail. But it's not always a child on the other end. In February of 2019, a 30-year-old man in North Texas was arrested on charges of producing and receiving child pornography. This man was allegedly pretending to be a young girl with the handle hotgirl8887 on Instagram, and he was convincing young boys to send him nude photos. He would then ask them to commit sexual acts with younger siblings. If the child refused, he would threaten to send the photos to the parents of the child. 
One of his victims, a 12-year-old boy in North Carolina, became uncomfortable and told an adult, sparking the investigation and arrest. They found photos of other young boys on this man's computer. Everyone has unmet needs and desires. As a community, we need to be aware of those who have many of their basic needs going unmet. These members of our community are the most vulnerable to trafficking. We also must be aware of the role technology plays in drastically increasing the access of predators and traffickers to our young people. Social media apps, texting, and 24-7 contact put any person with a smartphone or web-connected device at risk of being approached by a trafficker. In a recent study of students who were educated through Unbound's youth prevention program called Keeping Students Safe, 15% of the participants indicated they recognized the tactics of a trafficker in people who approached them online. By educating yourself and others about the realities of human trafficking, you can be part of saving a life. Take a minute to add the National Human Trafficking Hotline to your phone so you're ready to make a report if needed. It's 1-888-373-7888. Or you can text HELP to 233-733. Then head to unboundnow.org to learn how you can be involved and support the work of Unbound.